Hello everybody, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to today's session. You are welcome. You are highly welcome. Good evening everybody, good evening, good evening, welcome. As you join the platform, as you join the session, please go ahead and share. And of course, leave a comment. Where are you joining in from? Go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know where you're joining in from. Which country? Which city? If possible, what do you do? What do you do? Do you run a business? Comment your business in the chat box. The, fu the funny thing is today we're talking a lot more about the economy, business and finance, personal finance per se. So jump in. Jump in. Please go ahead and share. Thank you so, so much to the people who are already sharing. Thank you. I appreciate you. You're welcome, 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 welcome. Okay. Trying to share so other people can follow. Go ahead and leave a comment as you join. Please leave a comment. Where are you joining the live session from? Go ahead and just leave a comment and let us know where you're joining the session from. All right. One thing I can guarantee you is that before this live session is over, you will learn or you will be reminded about the seven things that you can do to improve your personal economic situation right and i am answering the question thank god the person that asked the question is on the live show right now so for people who are joining this series just today this is like the seventh live session that i have been handling in the last couple of weeks where i requested people to send me questions um, that they would like me to respond and if you have missed other live sessions, you can find them on my YouTube channel or you can find them on this same page where you are following the live session. So today I'll be talking about the seven ways that you can improve your personal economic situation. What are the seven ways, the seven things that you can do consistently and you will end up improving your personal economic situation and i always fondly say that if you see a human being that has 100 life problems if you look at critically 99 plus of those problems are money sponsored problems if that person just gets the right amount of money more than 90 percent of the problems they are facing would disappear right so if you understand how you can fix your personal economic situation, it will help you to greatly address certain life problems or certain things that you are being stressed or pressured about. And you will live a more happy and fulfilled life, if I can say that, okay? So that is what we will be handling in the course of this live session. And hopefully you are going to learn a couple of things that will greatly help you okay now the question came from Stanley Nyingsha Stanley he's on the live session today he asked the question what do you think from your expertise and experience that young startups in Africa and Cameroon in particular should focus on to change their economic situation and that of their community that was his 
question. He was asking me, what do I think that young entrepreneurs or startups or even anybody else, what do I think that they can do in Cameroon to improve their personal economic situation and that of their community, right? And I'm going to share my perspective and my experience as a young Cameroonian who has been in the startup sector both from a semi-urban area to being growing in the village and leaving the village to a small town to a small town to a big city and from an African perspective I've had the privilege to travel to about 15 African countries to speak and to consult and to train and all of that and there are things that I have observed and I have done myself and I've provided coaching and counsel based on this issue of personal economic situation and improving it and of course um, impacting the general community and why not the country right so the please question was from my expertise and from my experience what do i think that people can do let me use the word people instead of startups because there are people in this session right now who are not startup entrepreneurs they are business they, they, they are civil servants they are workers they are students right but everybody needs to improve their personal economic situation and of course to a certain extent contribute to the community economic situation right so his question was what do i think people can do to improve their personal economic situation of, and of course contribute to the economic situation of their immediate community and before i start sharing with you the seven things that i think and which i have seen them work and which i have used them as an individual and I know and I've seen many successful people use them within the African context and the Cameroon context and these are things that if people understand and begin to implement them consistently they will be able to improve their personal economic situation right but before I share with you those seven things that you can do I want to explain what it means the meaning of personal economic situation and community economic situation because his question highlighted these two key things and they're important for us to know when i talk about your personal economic situation i would like to explain your personal economic situation in about four points four facets for for, for easy understanding your personal economic situation that's point one your personal economic situation refers to first of all your financial status as an individual your financial status and when you are talking about somebody's financial status you're talking about the person's income and the person's expenses you can use that and summarize anybody's financial status and that is the foundation of anybody's personal economic situation income what is coming in and expenses what the person is spending their money on right and i can say that your personal economic situation is a positive one when you earn more than you spend right when you are earning more than you spend you are having a positive economic personal economic situation and I can go to an extent and say that when your earnings are consistently increasing on an annual basis you have a growing personal economic situation there are many people that have a stagnant personal economic situation if they were making let's say a hundred thousand francs two years ago every month today they are still making the same hundred thousand francs every month their personal economic situation is stagnant it is not growing and you cannot even say it is 
positive to a certain extent because of inflation. Because the more things become more expensive and how much you earn is not increasing, you cannot say that you have the right personal economic situation, right? So that is the first point. The second point when talking about somebody's personal economic situation is around savings and investment, right? This is where I'm talking about you being able to manage your savings and be able to invest wisely and understand what you're investing in. That also includes your personal economic situation, right? Remember, for those who are joining right now, I'm answering the question that somebody asked me that what can people do to improve their personal economic situation and, of course, contribute in improving the community economic situation. And before sharing the seven ways that people can follow to practically do that, I want to explain the two key concepts in that question. I want to explain personal economic situation and of course economic uh, community uh, situation. So that it's good to understand this concept. The more relevant knowledge, if you see anybody making more money in any community, one thing that they have more than you is knowledge and strategic information about that area or certain things around money and the economy. As simple as that, right? Good. So. I said I was going to explain the meaning of personal economic situation in a couple of points, like four points, and I've explained two points. The first point that I explained was that when talking about personal economic situation, you're talking about income and expenses, somebody's ability to make money and where they spend that money. And we can say that you have a positive personal economic situation when you earn more than how much you spend. And the second thing I was talking about was savings and investment. If I'm analyzing your personal economic situation, I need to look at your savings and investment, right? Your personal finance must always include your ability to manage your savings and of course invest wisely. The third thing about somebody's personal economic situation is debt management. How much you manage your debts. Effective management of debt is very crucial in your personal economic situation, right? Your personal economic well-being requires, very critical, requires a balanced responsibility between borrowing. Now, borrowing is not bad, but bad debt is terrible. What is bad debt? When if you borrow money to spend, it's bad debt. If you borrow money to do your wedding, it's bad debt. If you borrow money for enjoyment or do ceremonies just to spend, it's bad debt. You borrow money to buy dresses to wear, it's bad debt. You borrow money for anything that is just to spend, it's bad debt. Anything known as good debt is money that you borrow to put in an asset or put in a system that will enable you to make more money and you pay back that money using the income, using the extra income or extra dividends you are making from that system or that asset where you put that money that you borrowed. Now that is good debt, right? So if I'm evaluating your personal economic situation, I need to look at your debt management. What is your ability to manage your debt? The fourth thing on personal economic situation is financial planning and goals. If I'm analyzing your personal economic situation, I'm looking at your ability to plan your finances and set financial goals, both short-term and long-term financial goals, right? So all of these four elements you should that I've explained, take them and look at your personal life and assess what is the quality of your personal economic situation. It's very important. Right? If you are not able to understand these things, you will always struggle financially. People always, you always leave hand to mouth, year in, year out, and you cannot do any significant financial moves in your career, in your business, in your life, because you don't understand these things. Right? Good. I hope you are getting some points. Now that I have clearly explained what it means by your personal economic situation, let me now explain what it means, the meaning of community economic situation. Remember, his question was, what, 
can I advise people to do to improve their personal economic situation and of course contribute to the community economic um, situation. Thank you so much everybody for joining and for commenting. I hope that you are picking up some nuggets and some ideas that can help you. All right, thank you to the people who are sharing. Please keep, keep on sharing. Let us get more people to be part of this. Okay, now let me go to explaining community economic situation, right? I always say that you have not truly grown and matured as an individual if your activities or the things that you do cannot directly impact the community right it's not going to help you in any way or you are not going to you are not contributing to should i say posterity or the prosperity of your community one sign that you have genuinely grown as an individual you have genuinely matured as an individual is your ability to extend your impact to your immediate community right i always like to say for example let me say I respect churches that their impact extend to the community, right? It's very powerful. I expect individuals who do that, right? So I was very happy when I read his question, and he was not only focusing about his personal economic situation, but he said, how can this go further to contribute to community economic situation? right now what is community economic situation to better explain community economic situation or explain it in four phases and it is very important to understand this and especially for people who desire to be change makers or if you're a change maker you need to understand what is community economic situation when you understand these things, one thing that it will help you to do is you will be able to know the areas where you can contribute and advance your community, right? So, I like to look at the community economic situation from four phases. Number one, the economic activities of that community. When I say a community, it can be a town, a city, a country, your village, where you are, right? Whatever. Good. So, when I'm, when I'm looking at a community economy, I look at four things. Number one, I look at the economic activities of that community. The community's economic situation encompasses various economic activities within that community. Right? For example... Economic activities can include businesses, um, industries, um, services, or any activity that can do two things, generate income and provide employment. Generate income and provide employment. These are the kind of activities that can advance or improve a community. If whatever you do, if whatever a group of people are doing, if whatever they're doing can generate income, it has a ripple effect in that community. Even if it's a one-man business, the good thing is that business employing that person, and if that person can make money from that particular business, it plays a big role, right? Number two, employment opportunities. And these employment opportunities can be full-time, part-time, contract, anything that you can need an extra skill, an extra hand to do, and you pay that person can be rated under economic activities. So when, you're, when I'm looking at community economic situation, I am looking at, number one, the economic activities in that community. Number two, the second thing you should look at is income distribution. Is it a community where there are, you see, few people who are very rich and then the rest of the people are very poor? Income distribution. Is it a situation where 
you will see that a good number of people are in the upper class, a large number are in the middle class, and another number is in the lower class income distribution right and it is generally acknowledged that a more equitable distribution of income fosters social cohesion and reduces poverty and spikes economic growth now that is why one of the reasons why a good number of countries in the americas and in europe and Asia get to be doing well is because they work so hard to get a lot of people into the middle class. One of the things that makes a strong economy are people in the middle class. Characteristics of people in the middle class are people that can make money consistently, can pay their rent, can take care of their livelihood, can send their kids to school, can take care of their health care and all of that, right? Those, those kind of characteristics, right? So, if you are going to improve a community, you need to look at the income distribution in that community and the little role that you can play to foster that distribution to be more equitable, right? The third thing that I look at when it comes to community economic situation is the infrastructure. The infrastructure. The availability of infrastructure from roads, and other utilities like water, power, and essential services like healthcare and education play a great role in the economic situation of that community. Show me a community where you will find infrastructure to a certain level, roads, water, power is stable, now in this age and dispensation internet infrastructure is rated the same when it comes to water power and internet right and to a certain extent now the availability of healthcare institutions and education when you see this kind of infrastructure and essential services in a community that community will definitely automatically start experiencing proper economic growth, right? The fourth and final thing that I look, look at when I'm analyzing the economic situation of that community is the government policies in that community or how the stakeholders in that community implement certain government policies. And government policies here fall under three key things. Taxation, regulations, and economic incentives. Show me a community that is experiencing positive economic growth. I will show you a community that, number one, government policies can favor that community in terms of taxation policies that can favor small businesses because in most countries, almost everywhere in the world, SMEs make 70% of the economy per se, right? Number two, general economic regulations and policies. And number three, the economic incentives that the government can give to certain sectors, for example, subventions, right? To certain sectors like education, healthcare, and grants to startups, innovative grants to agriculture, very, all, all of these sectors. All of these play a significant role in shaping the economic situation of a particular community. Now that I have taken time to clearly explain the two concepts in his question, I think now we can now start breaking down this. Remember his question was, I'm trying to respond to the question, what can people do to improve their personal economic situation in bracket financial situation and of course contribute to the community economic situation of their community right and and i've taken time to explain what it means by your personal economic situation and the various elements you need to look at to have a good personal economic situation and secondly i've explained 
what it means by the meaning of community economic situation and the various things that should be available if a community is going to experience positive economic situation right i hope you're learning something are you learning something give me feedback in the comment section if you're learning something give me feedback are you picking up some points are you picking up some points are you picking up some points i hope so now before i come to your personal things the things that you can personally do as a person to improve your personal economic situation and live a much much better life let me talk about the five things to do to improve the community economic situation of your community let me start from that right as i said earlier one sign that you have truly grown and you have truly matured is how you can contribute in your little way in your little corner to impact your community right good so what are the five things that i recommend that we can do to positively improve our communities what are the five things that we can do all right number one let me get my laptop and charge okay number one the first thing i recommend that we can do to improve the economic situation of our various communities villages towns cities countries continent wherever that you are is number one collaborate locally this can change the situation of a community. Collaborate locally, right? Learn to partner with other startups, businesses, community organizations, youth organizations. Even churches can partner with churches. Schools can partner with schools. Initiatives can partner with initiatives. Let us learn to partner and collaborate locally in the community to create mutually beneficial opportunities. Until we can come to that level where we can collaborate locally without jealousy, without a competitive mindset, and without looking at who to still form or who to cross over and benefit more we will keep having communities that can barely do a lot right one thing that i have learned i've had the privilege to travel and do some work in, in europe and across america and all of that and anytime i'm in cameroon i always see that we do things differently and one thing that we find it difficult to do is the ability to collaborate locally among ourselves and create more impact for the community and the power of collaborating locally is creating mutually beneficial opportunities for our community here's one thing that i've been doing over the years and i don't think i've ever shared this anywhere but over the years, here's one thing that I have been doing. And this is the reason why I, I have been doing these things. Many a times, not many, consistently, one thing that I always do is, if I see somebody in Cameroon, or even in my immediate community, like in Kumbu, Baminda, Cameroon in general, and even other African countries, I see somebody doing something that is for the community. Even if they have not invited me, I am not involved in any way. I always do one thing. Most, the first thing I always do most of the time is sometimes I just surprise the person. Please, can you send me your bank account number? Can you send me your mobile money number? And I will just send them an amount from my heart that this is support. This is support for your initiative. I've not been invited. I don't need to be invited. I don't need to be there, but it is a way of me collaborating and most of the times if i can go to that event i can go to that community i go to that project and i give my little support in the way that i can because i know that if we can come together with our in a way to collaborate either with finances ideas equipments tools recommending each other whatever 
when that collaboration happens, something always sparks from that collaboration. And it is the creation of mutually beneficial opportunities for other people in the community. And when that happens, the community begins to grow. Okay, so let us learn to collaborate locally. If you see something that you can do in every little effort, for example, if you see this live session going on, you must not share because sometimes you like it per se. You can share because, of, oh, this is a good community initiative that if I share, another person can learn something and become better in the community. And that is a beneficial opportunity that you have created and maybe that person can start a business someday and that business can end up recruiting your daughter or your son someday there is always a ripple effect of collaboration that's a fact there's always a ripple effect you may not see it immediately you may see it in the long run but there is always a ripple effect okay that is the first thing that you can do to improve your community number two be socially responsible. There's something called social responsibility. Engage in community initiatives and corporate social responsibility, especially initiatives that will not give you anything back, like money or economic opportunities, but initiatives that will directly improve the community socially, involve in it, engage in it, right? Whatever, it could be a hospital cleanup, a school cleanup, a school initiative, or uh, a school comes to you to come and be a mentor to one of their school clubs, whatever that you can do that is for the community to be socially responsible. Number three, which is very important, is policy advocacy. Policy advocacy. Advocate for business friendly policies advocate for entrepreneurship and economic development policies that can support your community. For example, maybe you can go to the mayor's office and tell the mayor, oh, mayor, can you create a program where you can reduce council tax to people who have started businesses in the last six months, in the last two years? You can just have a meeting with the mayor of your community and just have that discussion. You can go to your parliamentarian, to your senator, propose the idea and ask him, please, from your position, can you go to the mayor? Can you go to the minister? Can you go? Whatever. Don't just feel that nothing is going to happen. Don't just feel that they're going to ignore you, but at least do your part. It could just be writing a letter. Personally, I've written a lot of open letters to the mayor and parliamentarians about entrepreneurship and a couple of things. And in some circumstances, they have acted. In some circumstances, I got no feedback, which is cool. But have you done your part, right? You can do policy advocacy to your church pastor. Pastors are very influential. Imams are very influential. Anybody that a group of people can listen to are influential people in the community. Go to them. So just advocate for something. Advocate for anything that can directly impact the business community or the economic community. In one way or the other, you are improving your community, right? The next thing is leverage on technology. Leverage on technology. Embrace digital solutions to reach a broader audience and enhance operational efficiency. For example, using this Facebook and using my laptop and whatever to reach many people is leveraging on technology. 10 years ago, 5 years ago, not 5 years, 20 years ago, if I wanted to do a session where I would need to gather 1,000 people in one place and speak to them, it would cost a lot of money, a lot of time, and all of that. But in the age of technology, with a simple 2, 3 clicks, I can get online and I can reach thousands of people. Most of these videos, when we are done, when I check later, I will see 2,000 views, 3,000 views in less than no time. And that is how 3,000 people are being impacted just on Facebook before when we get it on our YouTube channel. It's the same thing, right? From your corner. How can you leverage on technology to improve your community? How can you do that? A, a, a simple action as from your community, you can take your phone and you can record or video, video record 
a young man doing something amazing and you video record that put it on media and ask for support and people can support that young man that young lady doing amazing work and they lack the exposure and resources and your simple action that they have leveraged on technology can put that person on the spotlight and the person gets the support they need to do more for the community the question is it's not just about media technology is too wide what part of technology can you leverage on to do more impact for your community right number five the fit way that you can do this is pick a social problem pick a local problem and start solving pick a local problem and develop ideas and products or services around that and start solving that problem pick it let me give you a basic example let's say that you have discovered that kids in your community between the ages of 6 and 10 or even um, 12 they can barely read and write and this is so because the number of teachers and schools in your community is very small you can decide and create an after-school literacy program and gather these young people somewhere in a church this way that you can see advocate now with the pastor say please this is a problem in the community can we partner together and do an after-school literacy program a weekend literacy program where i can teach these kids literacy skills how to read write and do basic mathematics it could be help it could be a healthcare problem it could be a youth problem maybe you discover that young people are getting uh, are picking the wrong habits and the wrong path maybe you can organize a community youth program where you teach young people every saturday evening the power of having the right mindset the right character the right habits and how to think and plan for their future and set goals whatever what is the problem pick it and start solving all right if there are problems everywhere and when you begin to do that that is your way of improving the community good and we are getting a few points now to end the session let me share with you now seven things seven things that you can do to improve your personal economic situation seven things that you can do to improve it even if you're already doing fine financially right now maybe you can do the things in a bigger way and, in, and and double your financial situation and become more better and more stable right good that is the core of this live session that we um started good 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 thank you so much for those who are commenting and checking the comments and those who are sharing thank you so so much all right so let me share with you right now the seven things that i will recommend you to do in order to experience a better personal economic situation number one is and these things are foundational things if I want to talk to you now one-on-one, -on -one, I can look at where you are, where you're coming from, and I can develop a more personal framework that can lead you to financial, you know, prosperity and establishment, if I may call it that way, right? Good. So, I even have a book, um, How to Achieve Financial Stability and Sustainability. Some of the things that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about here briefly are more detailed in this book. At the moment, you can only order the book from Amazon anywhere. Amazon can deliver books. If you're in the United States, Europe, Middle East, anywhere you can order the book and you will get it. Um, the books will be in our Cameroon in a few in a few weeks. Okay, good. For people who are joining now, just go back and follow the session gradually. I explain the concepts of personal economic situation and the four elements that you need to get it right to have a good personal economic situation i explain community economic situation and the four elements that you need to get right or a community must get right in order to get a good person a good economic community situation and i explain the five things that anybody can do to improve their community now I want to share seven things or so that you can do to improve your personal economic situation your personal 
financial economic situation all right number one the foundation of it all is relevant skill development or let me say monetizable relevant skill development anybody you see making money more than you in any sector there are there are many other things that they get right but there are two foundational things that they have that you may not have number one is they have superior skills in that area and number two they have strategic important information that you don't have one thing i always do is when i see somebody doing better than me in any business that i am in or anything that i do one of the most important questions i ask myself is what do they know that i don't know so number one if you are going to improve your personal economic situation you need to check the superior level of your skills and the superior level of your ability to get access to strategic information that can cause economic growth in that particular sector where you operate and and that is why you know reading talking about reading books is not just um a cliche no reading book is or reading gathering information is the foundation reading relevant articles is the foundation of economic prosperity it is so when i see people who say i struggle to read i struggle to study i, I sometimes the first the first thing that i begin to worry about is their economic situation their fight their money life because it will not definitely be right even people who don't read and are doing well check people in the village who let me say village or any area where you may think that they are not reading but they're doing well financially check their ability to access information check the circle where they operate there is a place where they operate where they know more than you know okay so that's the first thing you have to do you need to make sure that you improve your superiority in terms of skills and in terms of strategic information see there is general information that if you know the same thing that everybody knows you will have the same results that everybody have but when you have access to certain things and know certain things and how to do certain things you can get results that a common man cannot get right so you need to do that number two i'm very quick about it number two budget effectively create and stick to a budget to manage your expenses and the power of budgeting is that you intentionally ensure that you always have a positive cash flow one of the benefits that i create a budget personally for myself is to ensure a positive cash flow is to ensure that i have a financial system where i am conscious that i make more money than how much i spend money if you are not conscious of the ratio that exists between how much money you bring in and how much money you spend in expenses you will always have a negative personal economic situation but when you are intentional about your budget one thing that you are more careful about is ensuring that you have a positive cash flow so do that number three is intentionally seek to diversify your income streams intentionally seek to diversify your income streams right explore the various revenue sources that you can study no more and invest in or take actions in that particular area there is no way you can stabilize your income and reduce your financial risk by having just one stream of income 
if your salary, for example, is the only way that money comes in, your personal economic situation will always be at risk. And it will always be at the mercy of your job. So your job and your salary is the seed that you can use to create other streams of making money. So you need to begin to find that. And this takes us back to information and skills. The more information you have, the more ways you can start thinking of income streams. There is no way that I can be personally stranded on just one way of making money. There is no way. Because of the, a lot of information that I have, I can always think of many ways to make money in any environment I find myself. Because the information I have, the skill set I command, would position me in a way that <clears throat> I can quickly see opportunities and diverse ways to create economic activities that can bring in the income that I need. That's why there are many people who begin to ask, what can I do to make more money? It's not just about what can you do. It's about how much do you know or how much have you consumed that can help you to know or find more ways to make more money. You get a point? So, diversify your income streams. I have a video on my YouTube channel that has about nine passive income opportunities for young people and women. Just go to YouTube, type Dr. Javni Joybert and go to my YouTube channel, go under videos and search for that video. You see a videos on um, sources of income for young people and women. And I, I, I spoke about more than 10 or so different sources of income that you can start with little or no capital. I cannot say that now on this, on this session, right? The fourth thing to do to improve your personal economic situation is debt management. Carefully manage your debt, right? And one thing about debt management is avoid debt that give that will give you high interest and avoid bad debt. Avoid borrowing money to spend on things that don't make sense. Avoid money, any money you borrow to spend and you are spending on just spending it's not you are not putting it you are not putting it in a system or in an asset that has the the the, 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 the viability of bringing you more money later on it's just an expense there are many people have advised if it's that you should borrow money to do a wedding don't do the wedding go and meet your pastor and you will not gather people people are not hungry they will eat in their house without your wedding so don't go and borrow money and do a large wedding and then start thinking of how to pay. I've counseled many people on send and I'll cut the budget into half. Cut it into half. Don't go and do that nonsense. Don't go and do spend money on, on wedding, on ceremonies, and then there is no wealth, there is no money system available to take care of the family that you're trying to build. That's the most stupid decision that I've seen people making. Don't borrow money to buy things to look good and impress people. Bad debt. Good debt, um, any amount of money that you borrow from a bank, from an individual, and you did well to negotiate the interest, one. And number two, you're putting that money into a system or into an asset that will bring you money later on. That's good debt management. Number five, invest wisely. I always say that if you're going to improve your personal finance, you need to learn how to make money, keep money, and then multiply that money. And one way to multiply that money is understanding investments. Prioritize investments in areas with growth potential, study the risks of that investment, and study the returns on investment in that particular area invest in you can buy land and keep what they call land banking you can build a house and people rent from you or a business rents from you you can if you, if you see a good small business a good startup and they're structured well and all of that you can invest in that startup and get equity or get shares or whatever 
you can if you're in a country that is more structured in terms of stock exchange and all of that buy stock buy shares do stocks in that company all of these things you can start doing them to improve your personal economic situation that is it for today this was supposed to be just a 30 minute session but we ended up doing 20 minutes plus on the 30 minutes making it 50 minutes of the session i hope that you picked a couple of stars if you are joining the session right now you can go back and watch from the beginning and listen to the things that i said on the four foundations that you need to get right to have a growing positive personal finance uh, uh, situation and the four things that i spoke about talking about improving the economic situation of your community as a change maker as a change leader and what you can do and of course the uh, things that i shared on how to uh, the five things that i shared on on how to improve your personal economic situation i think let me share some too still on personal economic situation the, the sixth thing i want to talk about is networking a lot of people don't pay attention to networking the people that you have around you will always directly affect your bank accounts whether you like it or not build a strong professional network that will position you where you can discover economic opportunities the power of being around the right people is they can point you to places where you will see economic situations economic opportunities there are some people that they only hear certain opportunities when people have taken advantage over it's because they are excluded from networks and communities that can help them discover and see opportunities if your closest friends only talk about certain things that is what you'll be exposed to but if your closest friends can talk about network or, or business opportunities or economic opportunities or industry opportunities that is what you'll be exposed to your association this your association will tell you what you will discover okay so intentionally connect some people may call it chook skin but chook skin that can open you up to more economic opportunities is good chook skinning there are some people that they are on their own and they will hardly see economic opportunities and they don't have people that can talk about them when there is an economic opportunity okay number seven is intentionally learn skills that you can monetize see there are certain things that you can learn in this life not because you like it but because you can use that thing and monetize and change your financial situation what is that skill that you can learn for the purpose of monetization monetize unique skills right and you can learn them and do workshops do courses create digital products like ebooks and whatever just to monetize what you know so i call them skill monetization find them and do it it's good you can learn something that you don't like but since you have the capacity to learn and you have the time to learn and you have the resources to learn learn it and monetize it make money and put the money in the thing that you like and change your financial status okay when you do that it's going to help you and of course start a business and grow a business i'm talking about a business I have a two months business training coming up that I focus on business strategy and business growth. If you are thinking of which business idea to start that can make you money and become more profitable, you can join the program. If you already run a business and you want to learn how to make more money from that business with unique strategies and advanced strategies using where you are, you need to join that particular program. In the description of this video, you see a WhatsApp number, text that WhatsApp number and we will attend to you i will attend to you and get you registered for the program i think only a few spots are left and we'll close admission and start training the next batch of profitable entrepreneurs all right everybody have a great 
Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And of course, see you when next we are here on the live session where I will talk about career, business, money, or anything that can contribute to incredible success. Thank you for sharing and keep sharing. Cheers.